Come on and praise the name of Jesus. Let's worship his holy name. Come on and lift our voice to heaven. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. God bless you today and forever. My name is Keith Sanford, also known as Reverend Kicks. And I just want to come to you again today just with an encouragement word. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 34, uh, 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 I will bless the Lord with all my heart and all my soul. I will bless the Lord at all times is what it says. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It, it goes on to say, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The, 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 the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. The title of this message today is going to be the big game because the world likes to play games. And I want to tell you today, your life is not a game, is not a gamble. And when you are able to praise God, when you really get into your, into serious with the Lord, when you go a hundred percent and not hold anything back, God will break things open when you study his word. God will break his, 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 he will open up the veil. He'll open up his life to you. He'll open up his heart to you. Uh, when you praise the Lord, there's places that you are stuck in that you'll stay stuck in because you're not giving it a hundred percent. Amen. You don't want a friend that's going to be some timey. Amen. You don't want to, you don't want uh, somebody that you depend on to be independable, uh, undependable uh, or irresponsible. Amen. And God's the same way. He wants us to bring it all to him with everything we got. He doesn't, he knows we're not perfect. Amen. God sent his only begotten son. That's the son that he wanted to keep. He knew that he had to give Jesus so that he could receive from, from Jesus the thing that was lost in the garden, the souls of all humanity, which eventually, uh, uh, fail because of sin and our own decisions amen uh, adam's sin and the, and our sin i should say so 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 the we have to i prayerfully that god would reveal to us that he is about restoration he is about deliverance and he is he is over all things and in him all things consist amen that's what they said colossians about jesus in, in chapter three but it's we have a responsibility to respond to the op opportunities that are given by what jesus did amen through his life his death his burial his resurrection and the promise that he's coming back again amen um I want to call you the call this a big game because the Super Bowl was yesterday and it was one of the biggest games in America. Amen. It's probably saw by millions of people. And the thing about it, when I was watching it, I really believe God was reminding me about how many people were sitting in there. What did they give up to get those seats? Amen. 800, 900, 1200, 3000, 5000, 10000 dollars. And 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 he, and he said he shared with me that they gave up all that money and they still left there. No matter if their team won or their team lost, they still wasn't satisfied if they didn't have me in their heart. Amen. And 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 it was a wake up call to to me to really realize that that, that we put our our hope and things that are not eternal and it also reminded me that uh that there's there's things that that, that we can take from that game uh, uh spiritual principles because first of all um pat mahomes and 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 kelsey and chris jones and sneed and all of them that played together whether they were on the offense or defense they knew who was on their team and they were on and they had decided to work together. Amen. And 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 a lot of people are suffering in this life because, number one, they think it's a game and they're taking gambles and, and unnecessary risk. Amen. 
the risk uh, far outweighs the reward, in my opinion. But they're making uh, very uh, permanent choices based on temporary emotions and feelings. Amen. But Pat Mahomes and their team and the Kansas City Chief, uh, they, they, they made a decision to work together and they made a decision to know each other on the field and out off the field, and 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 they they became to uh, to, to knit themselves closer. And one of the things that that we can draw from that, you have to know who's on your team. I think we bring people in sometimes too quickly. Mm -hmm. because we take them at face value. Amen. And how many of, of us know that we're more complex than just the first uh, impressions that people get from us? Amen. So, so, so in order to win the big game or to understand the big game, amen, uh, we need to know who, who, who labors amongst us. We need to be careful on who we allow mm -hmm, to get close to to close to us we need to be careful who we hang around with we need to be careful on how we spell relief amen because if i'm if i'm addicted to gambling brother we ain't going to vegas number one and i'm definitely not hanging around people that have my same addiction that is ridiculous if i'm really truly trying to get delivered and and restored from it Amen. So, so, so Pat Mahomes and, and, his, and the Kansas City Chief, they, they were acquainted with each other intimately. They knew their ins and outs and they knew their, their, their patterns of behavior. Amen. So when in crunch time, they didn't have to even talk about pumping each other up. All they had to do was look in each other's eyes and say, it's time. And, and, and because they knew each other so well, all they had to do was call the play. And it was executed because of the 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 intimacy mm -hmm. and the, and the relationship that they had with each other. See, see, God wants to bring us into a place where where our instincts are reflective and ref, reflecting His will and His desire. Amen. So that we don't have to beg God that but but through the Holy Spirit and through our, our close relationship with him, he can just you can see the mountain and you can just re, re, responsibly say that I am a mountain. I will not be moved. And I can say to this mountain that's in my way, uh, uh, be ye removed and be ye cast in the sea, because I do not doubt in my heart and I believe what I am saying shall come to pass and the Lord will bring it to pass. Amen. Uh, that uh, that's the big game. See, the big game, baby, is every day that you tell the devil no and you tell Jesus yes. That's the big game, because the more you're able to break those bad habits, that's why you can't hang around Tom, Dick, and Harry, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. You can't you can't hang with them, baby, because you hang with them so much. You ain't even got you haven't even grown up enough to be able to conquer the little temptations that you're suffering with. You need to hang around people that don't even have the same temptations as you. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't. I. I. I, I, I don't. I, I don't do, do drugs. I don't go to. I don't party. I'm not that. I don't do that no more. That's not even in my spirit. I have nothing to do with it. Amen. And 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 and, and if you are dealing with that, baby, you need to hang with me. And I need to hang around people that are more self confident. I need to take uh, hang around people that are that are, are more articulate because that's those weaknesses that I suffer in. I need to take I need to hang around people that are more patient, amen. I need to hang around people that that, that are more more uh, uh loving, amen. Cuz those are things that I struggle with, amen. But but I can't hang around hateful and hating people and th feel like that I'm going to get a breakthrough no matter how many times I go to church or Bible study. Hmm? I could pray so much that these this beard could twist together and be crosses all the way down to my toes. But if I don't ch allow Lord the Lord to change me, and when He instructs me to do something, and and, and I don't do it, I, I can't expect that I'm going to get any better or be any 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 more uh, 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 able 
to, to ward off the things that I am challenged with, that I'm struggling with, that I'm bound with. And that's a word for somebody that's watching today, baby. You need to know who you are hanging with and, 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 and make a choice. Stop straddling the fence between the party world and the and and the world uh, the, the the world that Christ has created in the body of Christ for you the purpose, amen. You got to make a choice between the party and your purpose because they ain't going together. Mm -mm -mm -mm, no way. God did not create you to be a partier. He did not create you to be a, a, a pimp, a pusher, and hang around uh, those that do it. Amen. God sent Jesus and Jesus hung around uh, 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 sinners and wine bibbers, baby, but he brought them out. He wasn't, he wasn't cracking open a, a, a tall boy and he sure in the world wasn't smoking no uh, meth and running no heroin in his arms and he wasn't having sex with pimps and, uh, with, with pimps and prostitutes either. No matter who he was around, he was Christ, the Messiah. He was the anointed one, the one that brought people out into his marvelous light. He didn't go in there to stay in the dark. He was the light and he brought them out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible says, I think in John chapter one, that those that, 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 that see Jesus have seen the light. A, a great light, which came from Isaiah, but it's it's repeated in John, I believe. And, and, and the Bible says the reason why they didn't come out is because they love darkness. Amen. And one thing about darkness is darkness will consume you. You'll think you ha have you ever got into something mm -hmm, and you just dabbled in it. And before you know it, you were drowning in it. And if it wasn't for the Lord. And his mercy and his compassion is new every day. You would have you would have died in it. Amen. We can't play. In places. That we're too weak to get out of. Amen. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous game. Amen. Uh, you know, we look at the, uh, we look at the, uh, 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 the, 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 the sportsmen, the celebrities and the fame. And we live, we live in a society of celebrity. Amen. Everybody wants to post everything right away on, uh, social media to show them at their best, you know, when they're having the most fun and all that. But the, you don't see people post about how they're struggling with addiction, how they're struggling in their marriage, how they're struggling in their finance. You don't see many posts on that. You don't see many posts about about how how people, whether they believe, uh, whether they believe uh, are, are are Christians and believers, how 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 they're still struggling to uh, to to maintain their 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 uh, salvation. Amen. You don't see, you don't hear many messages on, 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 on denying yourself and taking up your cross and follow after Christ, but it's a sacrifice. Amen. Even when you're partying, it's a sacrifice. Look at your bank account. Mm -hmm. Look at your, look at your, uh, and I'm talking about partying today because man, I was driving last night, getting home from halftime. You know, I left uh, my friend's house before halftime and, and man, there were so many drunk drivers out there. There's so many people out there drinking and driving and just, you know, throwing all the cares to, to the wind, you know. And I'm not, I am not saying this to hurt no feel, nobody feeling because I, I came from that lifestyle. I know it well. I began to drink alcohol uh, and, and, and do drugs in the eighth grade. So, so I'm not far I'm not, I'm not high and mighty and, 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 and think I'm holier than thou. Absolutely not. But I know the dangers and the trouble. And, 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 and I, I want to be a watchman on the wall 
that when I see things happening, I need to announce it. Amen. Because there could be somebody that really is really seeking answers. And I'm here to tell you today, if you cut off those people that are influencing you, mm -hmm, to, 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 to go down back into that muck and mire that, that God delivered you out of, your life will be better. It'll be easier. Uh-huh. You'll still have to fight the voices in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you'll be more you'll be more apt to hear the voice of the Lord. You'll be more apt to hear, come on somebody, godly counsel cuz I'm all those people that really are truly seeking a way out. God is going to put people and have been putting people in your life. Amen. To tell you how to get out of it, to direct you. Mhm. Mm and lovingly uh, correct you to bring you into a place where you can get rid and lay down and kill that thing that is that 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 is that is standing on your neck, choking the life out of you. Amen. I always go back to that song, and I think it's uh, Rolling Stones is saying, "I can't get no." No, 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 satisfaction. And it's true. In order for us to go to another level, we have to we have to get rid and, and let go of some of the things that we're keeping on the level that we're at. You know, there's a there's a there's a there's a a, a psalmist, I think, that says from the ends of the earth. I call to you. I think it's a song and I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me. Somebody say that. Lead me. To the rock that is higher than I. Amen. Uh, you know, I think I think God is trying to take us higher. Amen. But in order to go higher, mm -hmm, we got to get we got to get rid of, 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 of dead weight. Amen. Uh, the Bible said yesterday I learned that holy is an illustration of cut of being cut. Amen. And there's 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 things that God cuts away in our life. And he's not just a mad. Uh, he's not like Jason. that's just going to kill you. No, no, no. He's like he's like a fine chef that cuts away and trims away the fat. The things that are unnecessary. The things that are that, 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 that are not beneficial. that are not healthy. Amen. Uh, he will cut it away. Amen. He'll cut away the fat. It's excess. Amen. It's excess. That's what I want to get to say today to you. The big game. If you want to win the big game, baby, you got to let God get rid of the excess. I don't know how how long we're going to go, but I, I know I know the enemy is trying to keep you in the world system, in the world thinking. And, and the reason why you can't stop is because your behavior and your patterns of be your behavior has created patterns of behavior. So all the enemy has to do is wait in, until you're in a particular situation that you're always uh, in when you fall. A particular set of circumstances, a particular set of emotions, and then he just puts the temptation in there because because you can't blame God. He says no man is tempted or drawn away. By, by the Lord. You are tempted when you're, and you're drawn away by your own lust. Amen. Mm. By your own evil desires. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and if we keep those patterns of behavior, those circumstances, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to be as real as I can with you. Those circumstances and those situations and those emotional patterns and habits, they're going to always come back, baby, until you're dead and buried. They're always going to come back. Amen. But the Bible says that he will give you a brand new heart. Amen. He says that he will create in you a new heart and he'll create in you the right spirit within you. But you got to have a broken and a contrite tried heart. He, he's near those. He draws near to those that suffer as such. Amen. But we have to be humble enough and honest enough. Gosh, baby, we can't be playing games. You know people put on so many masks, they don't even know who they are. They pretend so much. 
And they rehearsed this false character uh, to hide who they really are. And, 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 and they're not fooling anybody but themselves. Amen. And they got a group of people that they hang around and they're all just puppets, just fake, just animated characters. They're, 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 they're faker than a, 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 fi, a, a $57 bill. Amen. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just enough. You can't stand fake people, you know. You can't fan, you can't stand fake people. And we, and, and God sees right through it, and He's got people in your life that see right through it, and and they can't help you if you're gonna pre pretend to be somebody that you're not. That's why I, I, we need to teach our children to not be afraid to be who they are. God made them just the way they should be and he made you and he made me the exact same way we should be. And we should be happy to be me. Say, amen, say that, I'm happy to be me. Because our God watches over us, amen. And, 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 and we don't have to fret what people shall do to us because the Lord is our helper and he's able to deliver us, amen. <sighs> We have to realize that whatever we permit, we participate in. Amen. There's no innocent bystanders in this world. And we need to participate in what God is doing. Amen. We can't be spectators. We got to be fully engaged, fully engaged in what God is doing. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I'm going to go over some notes that God gave me. It's not enough to, 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 to get into Christ and to allow the Holy Spirit to be moving in our life, although it's important. But we have to allow the, the Holy Spirit to transition us by our yielding to the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when we do that, he will renew our mind. Those patterns of, of, of maladaptive behavior, those habits of maladaptive behavior can only change if we let Jesus, amen, mm -hmm, renew our minds. Because it's with our minds we serve the Lord. Come on, somebody. We make up in our mind to do it, and then we do it. God wants to break wrong mindsets, amen. He says in, 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 in Ephesians, uh, he says, open to the, uh, open the eyes of my understanding, you know, uh, Paul prayed that, that, that our eyes would be open, you know, uh, he wants to make us, Jesus wants to make us fishers of men and disciples, amen, but they were, but, but the people of God were transformed by their choice, amen, it's a choice, and it was it was it was it was their choice and their choice was made easier by their proximity to the Lord. The closer you get to God, the easier it is. Amen. To make those decisions that's going to help you. Uh, 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 we are blessed by our association with Jesus and our connection with his anointing. Amen. Uh, Jesus no longer wants to call us servants or slaves. He wants to call us friends. You know, that's a conversation that, that God had with Moses. He no longer called him the servant. He called him a friend, you know, and, and we're brothers in, in the kingdom of God. And, and, and we should be joint heirs with Christ. Amen. That's what that's the closeness that, that, that God uh, wants us to have with him. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not servants of God through the law like slaves and servants did when we serve him and others through the grace of God's love that flows abundantly through our submission to Jesus Christ and the degree of the anointing flowing into our lives. It, it's going to depend on the level of our submission and our obedience to God's word. We must allow him in our life. His anointing deliver us. It delivers us, but it also empowers us to win the game. Amen. Um, 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 and 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 he'll he'll allow us to be the servants of Christ, where we can go in 
and assist in deliverance of others. Amen. We got to take time. Amen. We can't get caught up and overwhelmed with all of the things that are going on in this world. And, and as, 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 as I share that, uh, we pray against these, these demonic attacks, this, these, this, this, uh, slaughter of innocence. We see the devil raise his head up in Lakewood church right before the Spanish service start where this crazed woman with a long rifle begins to shoot and she winds up getting killed and, and her, her five-year son gets struck as well. And, and we just come against that. It's, it's an attack against a slaughter of innocence. People that are innocently coming to the church to try to receive a word from God. And here it is, some crazy woman comes in there with a gun and tries to shoot. And we bind that devil in the name of Jesus. And we ask for a spiritual covering over over all churches, amen, that God would give them insights and discernment and spiritual sensitivity to know what to do the moment it happens and how to safely navigate and, 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 and do what's necessary to provide protection and security physically, spiritually, and mentally to everybody that goes inside of the house of the God. Amen. The house of God. Amen. We pray for spiritual, uh, that spiritual covering to flow into the families. Amen. Everybody that's lost, everybody that's grieving. Uh, I, I may have friends over there that, that went to that church. Amen. And I pray for, 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 for strength and grace and this challenging time. And God says that he would give us beauty for ash, ashes and the oil of joy for, for mourning. Amen. We pray for our global move of God. Amen. We pray for miraculous recoveries and deliveries. We pray that, that, that God would, would supernaturally accelerate this breakthrough and this restoration, this deliverance that's going to be happening in 2024. Amen. We pray that what should have took two months is only going to take five weeks. Amen. Somebody say accelerated manifestations. Yeah, may God accelerate what he's going to what is what he's going to create in your life. Amen. And may it bless you. May it bless you. I pray for every leader every parent, every child, that God would give them supernatural insight concepts and reveal mysteries and secrets, amen, from, 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 the, from the mind of God, amen. And, and I pray that, that, that God will release his wisdom to us. And, and we just bless and thank him right now for this, 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 this season of, 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 of deliverance and restoration and, 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 and supernatural demonstration. Amen. Uh, uh, we have to be balanced. We need to take time to celebrate our victories. Amen. Because if you, if you if you stay too long in the fight, amen, and don't focus on the victories, amen, you can celebrate not 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 smoking today. You can celebrate not arguing today. You can celebrate not having road rage today. It's the little things, amen, that grow into big things, amen. But if we can't be grateful for the little blessings and the little breakthroughs, how can God give you a major breakthrough? Because you still ain't learned how to be grateful. And the little things, despise not. The day of small beginnings, the word says, amen. Uh-huh. Yeah, amen. The Bible, the Bible talks about us resting in the Lord. And, 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 and we can rest in the Lord because the Lord is our burden barrier. He will carry the weights if we cast our cares on him, for he cares for us. Amen. Um, I talk to a lot of people that, that, that are still bound and in, in, in addiction and in anger that that are, came out of prison or homelessness or came out of of uh, of, of batter uh, being battered and abused and and I tell them that 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 God wants to bring them out but they have to help him bring them out and they can do that by realizing them staying there. They're not comfortable. See, they, 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 I ask them, well, why do you still do that? Because it's comfortable. I said, is it really comfortable? Are you really comfortable 
with those stomach cramps? Are you really comfortable with those nightmares? Are you really comfortable with those withdrawals? Are you really comfortable with that diarrhea after you do everything that you're doing? Binging? Are you really comfortable? Or are you just familiar? Amen. It's more about being familiar with it mm -hmm, than being comfortable because it's not comfortable, baby wallowing in sorrow it's not it's not comfortable baby just partying every day no 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 we got to make up in our mind that the place that we are at in our life is too small for us it won't sustain us no more it's not going to satisfy us. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, two through four, enlarge the place of your tent and, and let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for you will break forth on the right hand and on the left and your seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for you, for you shall not be ashamed, neither will you be confused and confounded, for thou shall not be put to shame, for thou shall not forget the shame of, for thou, sh you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Uh, what, it's talking about you got to get bigger. See, you can't get better unless you get bigger. And you can't get bigger until you stretch yourself. That's why some people are, are uncomfortable because they're being stretched. And it's painful. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. Because it's just like your belly. Like a belly of a woman that just has a small embryo. And as it gets bigger and bigger, their belly grows and you see what's growing on in them by the stretch marks on the outside and they're not comfortable and they're in pain they can't they can't get comfortable amen but the thing inside of them is stretching them out and lengthening them that and it's not sparing them because of the pain it's not gonna stop baby because god has to get you bigger so you can be better and he's got to get you bigger so he can put something in you that's greater than what you got now because you're too you're too big for the place that you're in right now <laughs> glory to god Hallelujah. The Bible talks about Elijah. Listen, let's look at Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 17, 1 through 9, the Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, <laughs> isn't that a funny tribe name, Tishbite, Tishbite, who was in the inhabitants of, he was, he was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord God Israel liveth, liveth before whom I stand, there shall, there shall not be any dew or rain these years, but according to my word, and the word of the Lord came again unto him, saying, get thee out of here and turn eastward and hide thyself on the uh, by the brook Cherif, and that is before Jordan, and it shall be that you will drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Look at this uh, diet plan that God's got you. He will take you to a place out of that place where you're too small and take you to a place that doesn't look like you're going to be satisfied. But he says, I'm going to supernaturally provide for you. He said, you're going to drink from the brook that I put you at. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cause ravens to feed you. Come on, somebody. When God's in it, it might not make sense, but he is our provider. We got to trust him. Verse number five. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Look at the obedience right there. He knew who was on his team and he knew who was on the winning team. When you're with Jesus, you're on the winning team, baby. And the ravens brought him bread. Uh-huh. That's that's the word of God. The bread in, in the in the Bible represents the word of God. And the Bible says that the, the, the raven brought him bread and flesh in the morning. So he fed his spirit and his body. Come on, somebody. And the bread and the flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass, the Bible says it came to pass, that the brook dried up because there had not been any rain. And the Lord, remember, he prophesied there wasn't going to be the rain, or any rain. And then he said, mm -hmm. he said, the word of the Lord came and ate again. It, the word of the Lord came again. 
to, to, to Elijah saying, get up and get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a winning widow, widow woman. Boy, that's a tongue twister. A widow woman to sustain you. So he went from one place and he 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 got up out of there because he understood it was too small. And then when the other place became too small, he followed the word of God and he went to another place because the Bible says that the woman of Zarephath was going to sustain him. And that's how God develops us. He takes us from glory to glory to 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 uh uh, glory to glory and from strength to strength. He takes us from one level to another level. That's why the Bible encourages us to, to, to believe that he orders our steps. Amen. I know that this word is for you. I know it's a word right now. And I, I know that you see that where you are now is too small, it's too small for you. You can see it's too small for you. People have told you it's too small for you. And, 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 and the confirmation is in your inner man. I know the spirit of God is telling you this place is too small for you. And I, I, I think it's time to follow what, 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 what the Lord told, told, told uh, the prophet Elijah. Get up. It's time to rise up. Mm -hmm. He told, he told, he told, he told the, uh, the, the, the paraplegic. Uh, the man that was lame, he said to take up your bed, arise, take up your bed and walk. See that place that, 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 that man was at was too small for him. And when he did what God did seven to do, he, he, he got healed. Amen. Uh, it's time. It's high time to get up and get out. And go after it, amen. It's time to go after your healing. It's time to go after your breakthrough. It's time to go after your uh, deliverance. It's time to go after your restoration. It's time to go after your sobriety. It's time to go after your broken uh, 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 relationships. It's time to do something. Mm. Because God is bringing us. He's our good shepherd. He's bringing us to bigger, better, and, and greener pastures, baby. And, 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 and it's humility. It's key. Humility is saying that I must decrease as he increases. It's not about key D. It's about J-E-S-U-S. -S, plus nothing, minus nothing. Without him, I'm nothing. Without him, I am nothing. Without We, we know that without Jesus, it's not, we're nothing. We need to give God all the credit for making, for allowing you to make it out. And not get a big head. Amen. The Bible says, be careful when you think you stand, lest you fall. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We need to make our boast in the Lord and rejoice about what he did in it. Amen. Transformation occurs as you go. We didn't do anything. If God didn't do it, we would have perished. And every test, every child, and those chains that have had us bound, we'd still be bound in them. Come on, somebody. The focal point in this season is got to be our relationship with God, and we need to get closer to Him. And in, and as we do, it's going to it's going to uh, determine our degree and level of hearing and understanding, and what we see, and how we feel, and how we react. This place is too small for us. Uh huh. We got to get up. We got to get out. We got to do something. We need to move out in concert. Uh huh. Not that. Uh, no, in concert, in harmony, in unity, in lock and step, in sync with what God is instructing us to do. Come on, somebody. And as we go, we will grow. We're a church on the move, amen. We're going to follow the cloud. I love Pastor Becerra, George Becerra at Journey to the Cross. I love Pastor Hendricks. I love uh, a Dorcas, I love all of the, 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 the people that are instrumental in my life that speak into me. They challenge me to be better. And I want to grow. I want to be better. 
Amen. I don't want to be bigger. I want to be better. Amen. And I hang around those people and I talk to them and I'm accountable to Pastor Hendricks. I'm accountable to my mom. I'm accountable to my wife. I'm accountable to all these, these powerful people in my life because I want to be ready. I want to get better. I, I want to be a servant. I want to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant enter into the kingdom, which I have established from the foundation of the world. Amen. I want to ride. I want to fly. Amen. I want to be caught up in the clouds to forever be with the Lord. And I want to bring you to Christ so you can be with us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want you to know today, it's mercy's calling. Mercy said no. Jesus said no. I'm not gonna let him go. I'm not gonna sit away. I'm not gonna just sit here and watch you deteriorate. You don't have to be afraid. Mm -mm, you don't. God's not scary. <laughs> Amen. God's not scary, brother. He he's he's he is. The, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He will go after your enemy and eat him up. Amen. He is the bright and morning star. He will light the way in any darkness to, so you can find your way back to him. He is the good shepherd. He will be a perfect protector and a provider for you. He's a healer. Come on, somebody. He's a great physician. Come on. He's the great I am. He's mighty to save forever. He's the author of salvation. Come on, somebody. The Bible promises you. In Psalms 40, 145, 13 and 14, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his, in, his dominion endures through all generations and he will uphold all that fall and he will raise them up, all that are bowed down. Baby, you can't get too down for God not to uphold you. Mmm. But Matthew 10, 40, 40 says that, that, that this is going to be a sacrifice. And in 10, 40, Matthew 10, 22, 10, 22, I should say, says, and you shall be hated of all men. Now you be, you will be hated. Hmm? Hate will make you great. That's what my wife told me the other day. Boy, that broke in my spirit so much. I got happy. Hate will make you great. Matthew 10, 22 says like this, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. I pray that you will endure. I pray that you would endure. I pray that you would endure. I pray for endurance. Pray for perseverance. Mm. I pray that you have that bounce back spirit. The Bible says the just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, rise up, take up your bed and walk. You will grow as you go. You want to win the big game, baby? Talk to you like my coach talked to us, baby. You got to go for it. You got to go get it all. You got to give it your all. You can't be distracted. Can't go for the left or the right. You can't look at those things because we have, we have a God that loves you. And it's, and it's, 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 it's it's not a normal love. It's crazy love. It's it's love that you cannot comprehend. What are you saying, Keith? I'm saying, baby, right now where you're at, Jesus loves you. And he loves you like this. The Bible says that God demonstrated his love for us. That while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm, that Christ died for us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 7, that love bears all things. Believes. God, 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 God wants to bear you up because he loves you. It says that believes all things. God wants to, he believes in you. That's why he sent his son. It says that the Bible says he hopes all things. See, there's hope in Christ. You may have, 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 have been on your last straw, baby, but God's not done with you. The Bible says, that love endures all things. If you let God love you, the Bible says in 1 John, that love, perfect love, and that's a love that comes from God, it casts out all fear. Baby, you see how that baby is releasing that love? 
See, we got to get rid of that, that thing that we think we need to keep. That little love, because our love is so small. It's so small, it's so small. But God's love is so big. It bears all things, believes all things, it hopes all things, and it endures all things. The Bible says in James 1.12, Blessed is the man that endures in temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. See, you thought all the struggle was for nothing. No, baby. God's trying to prepare you for eternity. And as you allow him to prepare you, you'll grow on the inside and you'll be able to tell. The enemy in yourself, no, 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 no. I love Jesus more. My life is not a game. It's not, I'm not going to play Russian roulette. I'm not going to play craps with my life. Amen. It's valuable. Not for anything that I've done, but what God has did. He sent his son to suffer, bleed, and die for me. Jesus drunk the cup of the wrath of God. All the sins of the world, all the cussing, all the rapes, all the murders, all the sickness, all the diseases, all the wars, all the torment, all the abuse. He drank it. He took all the sins upon himself. God raised him up 30 days. He arose from the grave. The keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he opened up a door of opportunity so you could be in the family of God. The Bible says that if you endure this temptation through this trial, You'll receive the crown of life. But you have to love him. You have to do it. You have to allow him to love you so you can really know what love is. Whew, there's a broken hearted song that used to say, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. God's crying out today. I'll show you. Bible says in, 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 uh, in Psalms 34, taste and see. The opportunities here is for you and for me. Will you let go? Look at that balloon. Will you let go? Will you let go of what you're holding on to? You're holding on to it so tight. Bro, it's not ever going to satisfy. Only Jesus can satisfy what's happening today. It's happening in the world. It's happening in your life. It's happening in your marriage. What's happening in your family? What's happening in your in your job? What's happening in your mind? What's happening in your heart? He will bear all things. He believes in you. Mm -hmm. Will you pray this prayer with me in the name of Jesus? I've treated my life like a game and a gamble. And I don't want to take any more risks today. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to be my personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner. I've committed sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I forgive those other people that have hurt me. I pray in your name that you would forgive me of my trespasses. Because I'm making up my mind today to forgive those that trespass against us, against me. Lord, I pray that you would fill me with your spirit, that I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I ask you, Lord, right now to direct me in the places that I need to go. I ask you to show me who I am. And I ask you to give me strength to persevere, to endure. Because mm -hmm. I'm being tried, Father, and I pray that I receive the crown of life. I thank you for your blessings on my life, Lord. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior, Lord, in Jesus' name. Be Lord over my life 
and all the things to do with my life, Lord. I ask you to touch and transform me, and I'll be sure to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I ask you to touch everybody that's heard this message, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just allow them to know you like they've never known you before. I pray that they could hear you like they've never heard you before. I pray that you would touch them like you've never touched them before, Lord. And I pray that you would lead them through these challenges. And they would make up their mind, Lord Jesus, that they need to switch teams. Get on the winning side, amen. And allow you to be the quarterback. Let you be the coach, Lord. Let you to be the GM of their life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. God bless you. Bye-bye.